joined today by Paul Spargo, or Spargs, as many of your mates no doubt call you. What I like to do as we do these journeys is, is start with your local heritage to, to Albury Wodonga. So, when did you come here? Were you born here? Kev, I was originally born in Perth, uh, and then my father moved over to this ground, or to the Albury Footy Club, to coach. Um, and I was three years old, so and then lived my life in Albury. Um, yeah, went to school here, went to Albury Public School, uh, and then moved on to Albury High. So yeah, an Albury boy, pretty much, and you know, I'm very proud of that, actually. And uh, you've had quite a good football career, but of course, following in the footsteps of your, your entire family before you, is that right? Yeah, look, my dad obviously played AFL football or VFL football back then with Footscray. Um, my uncle also played for Footscray and my grandfather, the chief as we used to co uh, call him, um, he played for Melbourne and Footscray. So yeah, there's a, uh, a bit of history there with the AFL slash VFL and uh, yeah, I was fortunate enough then to, to do the same thing. So. And as we sit here today, we're, we're waiting for the outcome of the fourth generation for your own son yeah. to see how he goes. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Um, little Charlie, he's only small, but um, he's in the draft for tomorrow night and hopefully um, he can find himself a home and you know at, at AFL level as well but uh, he deserves to he's um he's put the hard work in so fingers crossed. Was the pressure on for you to have a son when you decided oh. to have a family uh, to make sure the next generation came through at the high level football? Oh not really no um it, it's just like I've got an older boy who played footy and he's gone on to do other things with study and, and whatnot and and a, and a daughter who's a bit younger but um yeah, no, Charlie just loved his footy from day one and, yeah, he's fortunate enough to be not bad at it, so... Mm. Best of luck. Yeah, yeah, let's hope so. I'm sure it'll make you proud if that uh, comes across the line. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we're excited for tomorrow night and um, we're not sure whether he'll get picked up number one and then if he does get picked up, where he'll end up. He could be, you know, one of 18 clubs and anywhere in Australia, so... Uh, it's exciting, but it's an anxious time as well. How do you think other people would describe Paul Spargo? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I suppose I'm a fairly private person, uh, unless you get to know me and um, you know my close mates would, would not say that. But yeah, I look, I'm, I, I like to be fairly private. Um, I'd like to be thought of, of as a pretty honest, trustworthy person, and um, I'm very happy uh, that I'm an Aubrey boy. Um, I'm very loyal to my family and my friends. So yeah, it's probably how I'd sum myself up. And so. We know that over the years you've been business locally. We know you're currently working for a fairly significant business, Josh. You're probably wearing the, the shirt there today. No yeah, doubt you've yeah. been given the time to come and speak they'll, to they'll us. I'll be happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what do you do with your spare time? Obviously, football's still a bit of your, bit of your life but and, and within your family. But what other hobbies or interests do you have? Yeah, look, uh, another good question because it, it's funny. I, I don't have a lot to do with footy per se anymore so you know I've got the kids so two boys and a, and a daughter who are heavily involved in sport and you know lots of different activities from dancing and you know obviously footy and basketball netball all that kind of stuff so I try to get to a, as many of those um, games as I can and support them as much as I can just for from the side, I don't like to get front and centre, <laughs> don't want to be an ugly parent yeah. um, but I feel that I need to do that. My dad was in business with, with Blacklocks, Ford, um, for many, many years, and he was the general manager there. And one of his biggest regrets was he never got us, got to see us, you know, watch us play sport and grow and develop as, as kids as much as he would have liked. So that's, that's a regret of his, and I, I always promised myself that I'd always go and watch the kids and support them with whatever they did. And learn from what was unfortunate, I guess your father's sort of, you know. Yeah, yeah, oh, look, at the time he had to work hard yeah. and um, he was, you know, doing well and the business was doing well, but it did take up a large percentage, a large, large proportion of his time. So that was just one thing that if he could change, he, he would have. So admitting yourself, you know, that you're a fairly private man. Yep. What's something interesting that perhaps you could tell me now, or even a story that not many people would know? Is there anything that comes to mind? Um, not off the top of my head. I look, I'm with the loyalty, I suppose. My wife and uh, Kate and I have been married for, for many, many years. We met when we were 15. Wow. Um, so we're childhood sweethearts, if you like. Um, she was a Wodonga girl, so at the time, 
Aubrey Wodonga, you, you never went across and pinched a Wodonga girl. And I was going to say, how did you I get did. across the river? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nearly World War Three at, at, at some stage. But um, yeah, no, so we've been married. Geez, I can't, don't even know off the top of my head how long, but we've been together since we were 15. And um, again, that's something we're both proud of and it uh, doesn't happen much anymore. No. But um, yeah, three beautiful kids and uh, that's probably not a great story. But I mean, I, the other thing I'm pretty proud of is that I jumped off the Union Bridge at Albury. Um, across the, if you're an Albury boy, yeah. that's one thing you have to do, jump off the Uni Bridge, which... And prove yourself, can't do it anymore. No, nah, they've, oh, they've got the I'm mesh still up. I've seen them do it, but yeah, it's a bit no, more difficult. Well, you probably weren't supposed to back in yeah. those days. But <laughs> we used to give the truckies a bit of what for, and then, then off jump. we jump. So, yeah. Yeah. if you're an Albury boy, that's what you had to do. What do you consider to be your biggest achievement in life so far, knowing that you've coached at, at good <laughs> levels, you've played at, at great levels, a couple of different clubs? Yeah, yeah. Is that is that your biggest professional achievement? Do you think is is a family a bigger achievement that outweighs all of that? Yeah. Look, I think they're both um, something that I, I feel proud of, and and I think I've achieved a lot. But I think the, my biggest achievement is that I was able to open a, a, a business up, Spargo Motors, yeah. um, basically from scratch and on my own, and we were there for. Uh, 14 or 15 years, and it was. I bought a, a car off you. Yeah, well, there yeah. you go. Still, <laughs> hopefully, it's still going. But look, it, 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 that's a difficult thing, and it's something that, um, and, and it was a good business for a, a fair period of time. Um, so you know, I had to make a decision 12 months ago to to look at other avenues and um, prioritise, you know, other things in life. But uh, you know, that's something that I'm extremely proud of that I was able to start a business up from scratch, and and for it to be, you know, relatively successful was something that I'm even more proud of. Well, 14 years or so, that's, yeah, a, that's yeah. success. Yeah, 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 yeah. And obviously market change in that time and you yeah, know, you oh, anyway. Yeah, lots of different things happen and, um, you know, uh, you've always got to be progressive and you've always got to look at other things and, um, yeah, I prioritised family and, 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 you know, probably not as much stress. Yeah. Uh, but they were enjoyable years and, you know, they were successful, so. Was that one of the toughest decisions you ever had to make, to, to wind up your own business and, and return to the workforce? Yeah, it was, but the time was right. Um, with the children being the age they're at and Kate and I, where we were at in our lives, we, we kind of were comfortable enough to, to look at other options and, um, yeah, look, it was just a matter of timing and, yeah, we're comfortable with the decision we made. What do you think's one of the worst things that's ever happened to you in life? Oh, without doubt, the worst thing that ever happened to me was losing my mother at a young age um, to cancer. Uh, so, you know, three boys and my dad, and um, she was a, you know, great lady who we loved, and she was just full of life and um, unfortunately stricken down by cancer uh, at a relatively young age. And yeah, that's that's the hardest thing that I've ever had to deal with and cope with. And to this day, it's something that I, um, yeah struggle to get my head around sometimes. How old were you at the time? Uh, I was in Melbourne, so probably 23 or 24, but I had a younger brother who was only 16 or 17 and yeah. um, a middle brother who's in between us, but yeah, it was, yeah, we relied on her for so much, four boys and, you yeah. know, you know, one female and she, she ran all of our lives, so, uh, and she loved to do it and yeah, she was fantastic. What's one of the best things that you think's ever happened to you in life? Best thing that's oh, obviously your children is great. Um, you know, I'm fortunate to have three healthy, beautiful kids. Uh, meeting my wife when I was, you know, young and been with her ever since, and we're still happily married and, and, and best of all, good mates. Yeah. Um, you know, the opportunity to coach the Albury Footy Club was was amazing. I was never going to really coach. I didn't aspire to coach, and um, through one one thing led to another. When I came back. Uh, when mum was sick, that's why I came back to Albury. Uh, and, you know, that was a long, long time ago, but I look back at, at that and all the memories I've had and all the friendships that I've made on the way through has just been spectacular. And I love this footy club. Yeah. Well, you certainly, a couple of times have touched on the fact that you're proud of Albury, you're proud of being local, you're proud of yeah. your marriage. Yeah. Why do you think your marriage has been so successful? Childhood sweethearts, 15, you know, you could quite easily... Yeah. A lot of people have got sick of a partner, and yeah. fairly quickly too in some cases. Probably a lot of hard work, Kev. A lot is that of hard what it work. Is? Yeah, probably. I mean, it's like anything in life; it's not easy. Um, you have your highs and your lows, and you get through. But yeah, probably a lot of hard work. Yeah. Your kids are they in a position? Are they married or in a position? No, to be not yet. Married no, I've got Abe, who's what's he? Twenty, 
Charlie's just about to turn 18 and Annabelle's 14, so... Yeah, so yeah. there's still a couple of years for yeah, you to save yeah, up yeah, for all those so. weddings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> bit of time, bit of time yet. If you could be anywhere in the world tomorrow, uh, yeah, income, finances, no problem, yeah. where do you think you'd be? Well, I'd always like to have a base in Albury, mm. but I do love the coast, so anywhere on the coast. Nice climate, yeah. few waves, a couple of nice cold beers. Bit of a surfer? Oh... The closet surfer. No, yeah. I'd, I'm not, I, I wouldn't call myself a surfer, but um, I, I, I like outdoors and I, I love the beach and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah. And what do you think you'll be doing in five years from now? If we sat back on this same grandstand bench, where do you, what do you think you'd be up to? Well, I won't be coaching footy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, hopefully I'll be up north, um, semi-retired or, or retired. That'll make me yeah, late fifties. So yeah, that, that's that's a goal at some stage to move north. As I said, have a base in Albury. Except to a, to a stable, warm cli- uh, climate. Is it, the winters are a bit yeah, harsh in Albury, Wodonga? Yeah, or? my father and my brother are up, up that way. So yeah. um, you know, to move closer to them as Dad gets older, yeah. look after him, and but also enjoy the, the qualities of life that uh, Queensland presents. <laughs> Touching on coaching, as a coach. How do you go about motivating different individuals to work together and become a winning team? You've got different personalities. How do you make that happen? Um, well, first of all, I think you've got to have an element of self-motivation. There's no doubt about that. And when we look at recruiting or when we look at the, the type of people we want to come to your footy club, um, we want quality. We want quality of person over and above anything else. So you can be a great footy player uh, but not have that that you know that honesty as, as an individual so um, you know if you've got that and you're a quality person then I tend to think that you'll be self-motivated anyway uh, so from a coaching perspective that makes that a lot easier yeah. um, and then when you bring a group of self-motivated individuals or footy players together uh, they can then raise that bar and they you know, they challenge each other and um, all those kind of things. And then that's just a, a really good recipe for success. So you, you've got that lovely balance of, um, oh, you know, um, competition. Yeah. And it just makes people strive harder and harder. And uh, as long as they're uh, realmed in and, and they're, they're doing it together, not just as individuals, um, that can be, you know, a very good recipe for success. Mm. When you're going to a big game, such as a grand final, as an example, yeah. how do you prepare the team to give them the best chance at, at that success? Again, a good question, and it's a question that's often asked. Uh, you come up to big games, and I'm not sure you, you want to change a lot. Obviously, there's a lot riding on that particular game, or you know, the outcome is is really important. But you know, we tended to go about um, you know business as usual, so keeping everything in perspective. You know, keeping your preparation right. Um, you know, being honest enough to talk to each other and talk to everyone else about. Yeah, look, at the end of it, it is really, really important. Probably more important than it, you know any other game during the year. But you need to keep everything in perspective, and you need to not change your preparation because that's what's got you there, and that's what's going to help you win that game of football. So as steady as she goes. Yeah, pretty much. With but not shying away from the fact that you know it is an important game either. I'm passionate about uh, people that want to have a go. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I don't suffer fools. So uh, a lot of people say, "Yeah, look, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that," and you know, it's words. You want to see actions. And so I'm passionate about people that want to have a go and then back that up with actions rather than than just words. Again, I think it gets back to to the individual. So you know, you, you put structures and. Um, those kind of things in place as a football player, but then you don't want um, not to allow them to express themselves and play with flair and you know show what they've got you know got to show. So we're, I'm not sure that's innovation, but um, you, you want to give them pr- strong parameters, but uh, and guidelines, so the team rules and all that kind of thing. But within that, boys, if you want to be innovative, that innov- or show innovation, um, feel free uh, and take you know, take it on and take it have, it, have a real crack, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, it's really important to um, have those core values, you know, really spoken about early days and have them in place. And once you get those, those values in place, 
my strong belief is that it's just habit. It's, you know, and, and it's habit and patterns. So if you have got those core values and you do them day in, day out, no matter what, under, you know, pressure, under no pressure, that come crunch time, um, you know, they're going to hold up those core values. So yeah, if, if you just, it's, it's repetitive and it's, it's repetition, but um, it's more, if, if, you t if you practice and train good habits, then ultimately, uh, under pressure, they'll come to the fore and help you out. Yeah, pretty similar kind of. You know, you've got those, those values and, you, and your philosophies that you're very, very strong on. Um, and you never, you never shy away from them, whether you're, you know, winning 10 games in a row or you're losing 10 games in a row. And I mean, if you're strong with those values and those philosophies, uh, your players embrace them and, 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 and come on board, uh, then it's a pretty easy ship to drive. And uh, I tend to think that you'll be, ultimately be successful more times than you won't be. Well, I think you've got to be honest. You've got to be honest within, so you've got to be honest about uh, how you go about your own um, game or you know work eth you know work, um, and then I think if you do that, then you win the respect, uh, and then once you win the respect, then obviously people listen and take notice. Uh, and if you're going to be a leader, you need to be respected. So it starts kind of there, and it builds up slowly through a number of those things. So, you know those those words, um, work ethic and honesty and. Uh, once you're trusted and you win that respect, then I think you can lead in your own right uh, strongly and then people will follow. But what used to drive me was probably fear of failure in the end. Um, and once you, you get a bit of success, the last thing you want to do is have someone that you think you're capable of beating beat you. So it's that fear of losing and that fear of not being as successful as you'd like, particularly if you've put a lot of hard work in and a lot of preparation in. Um, you know, I'd imagine if you only did it half cocked and you didn't actually put all that work into it and all those hours into it, it wouldn't mean as much, but it's to find that um, if you're really prepared and you really worked hard, then uh, you would just, there was no way you wanted to fail and see all that hard work go to waste. Well, Paul Spargo, that's as hard as it was to spend a bit of time here in the Albury Football Ground Grandstand with me this afternoon. Thanks so much for sharing part of your journey with us. No worries, Ken. Thank you.